All right, so I got this question on my AMA about React testing, and it's a pretty general question, mostly about how do I get coverage on some of these things that um, I'm missing coverage on. So um, it's a little involved, and so I thought the easiest way for me to answer this would be by uh, just reading through it um, in screencast form. So um, let's see, there's a link here to a gist, which is basically exactly what he copied down here, like I asked him to, so that was nice of him. Um, yeah, looking for constructive criticism to improve, uh, raise the coverage, give some tips. Um, okay, cool. So the first thing that I'm gonna say is, <clears throat> if this is for an app, you're already at you know something like 92% code coverage all overall. So you're probably doing pretty good um, as far as the code coverage goes. Like uh, maybe uh, this right here, and this is probably important, but like whether or not you're rendering null probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, but for a library and something that's gonna be reused a lot in a lot of different places, then yeah, you'll wanna make sure you can cover everything. So, um, yeah, to, to be able to test stuff like this, um, basically in general, when you're testing React stuff or anything that's UI, um, the closer you get to simulating a user experience, the more confident that you'll be that your stuff works when uh, the user is experiencing it. And so if we were to um, like rewrite, uh, or, or like, so with React, there are some ways that you can write your tests so that um, you say, okay, get me the instance of the component. Now I'm going to start calling methods on it. Well, the user of your component is never going to be just calling methods on it. It's going to be passing props or, or like the end user is going to be clicking on buttons and stuff. So, uh, yeah, you want to get as close to, um, like, um, testing is all about confidence and you want to get as much confidence from your tests as possible. Um, while trading off the ergonomics of, of writing those tests and, and running those tests. Um, and so if you can have good ergonomics writing and running the tests and um, simulate the end user um, really well, then that's a good thing. So yeah, like getting instances of things and then just calling function, uh, calling methods on those, that's probably not the, the good best way to go. And I, I really pretty much never do that. Um, even, even in the name of getting code coverage, it's just, yeah. Sometimes, um, though getting code coverage is not easy to do. And so, um, there's the, this, uh, like if you really just want to say hundred percent code coverage, except for like these one or two places, and we're just going to, we're going to enforce hundred percent co coverage, but in these one or two places, it's okay. And we'll leave a comment explaining why. Um, and with the modern tools like Istanbul, you can have a, you can have a code comment that says like, ignore the coverage here. So anyway, uh, let's look at the tests and let's see, we've got, yeah, two tests, a, uh, collections view dot test. And, uh, I think this might actually be the exact same file. Let's see. Oh no, this isn't a test file. This is the implementation here. I'm going to just rename that, uh, for him here really quick and update that. Okay. So the implementation, uh, I'm not going to dive into this too deep, um, but I'll, I'll look at the test here. So using Enzyme, I pretty much never, ever, 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 ever use shallow rendering. I've, I've never used shallow rendering. And the reason that I don't use shallow rendering is because um, what, it, what it basically does is um, it will only render until the next composite component. And in your case, that means that you're not going to render the list filter. So it, it'll um, not actually render anything there. So um, from a pure like unit test standpoint, I guess that's a good thing uh, because you're only testing the collections view and then you can verify that it is rendering a list view uh, list filter, but you don't care what it, that is. But um, if we're talking about confidence and the level of confidence that we get from the things that we're testing, you're losing a ton of confidence when you're um, just like automatically mocking all of these uh, dependencies that you're relying on. So um, if one of these things breaks under the, um, under the covers and you don't know, uh, then you can ship bugs. And so you, you lose a lot of confidence when you use shallow rendering. If you really, really need to mock something, and there are definitely use cases for that, like there's an animation library and you don't want it to animate in your tests, like you just, 
you can mock that away. We, I've done that before, and that's that's totally fine. Um, then you use Jest mocking. Uh, so it, like the Jest testing framework is really the only one I, I use ever, and it has fantastic mocking capabilities that you can learn about. Um, but you are in control of what you're mocking. Um, you're not just automatically mocking every composite component. Because the other thing is, um, I could take like this section right here and I'll make a new component out of that just in this file. And now this section won't be rendered uh, during shallow rendering either. So that's like kind of annoying. So uh, yeah, highly recommend against using shallow rendering. Um, I use uh, render when I can. And um, I, I try to only uh, take, if I'm going to do snapshot testing, like snapshot assertions, then I try to only do uh, a render um, version of the snapshot or a snapshot, a rendered component. And then I do mounting if I need to uh, run lifecycle hooks or uh, interact with the, the DOM. So simulate clicks and stuff. Um, but I try not to take snapshots of mounted components. And the reason for that is it's, uh, the snapshot's going to show you a whole bunch of information um, that is implementation details. Like it'll show you the, the name of these components that it's rendering and all that. And those are totally implementation details um, that uh, I don't want in my tests. So yeah, try to use render. And if you need to interact with the, the component or you need to run lifecycle hooks, then uh, use mounting. And only snapshot um, when it like I, I've got a blog post about this actually. That's uh, but don't snapshot make huge snapshots. It's not a good idea. Um, nobody will review those. Okay, I'll just show you the blog post. It's called um, "Effective Snapshot Testing," and this is the giant image. So when you see that, that is effective snapshot testing. So give that a look uh, for sure. Okay, cool. So specifically. Um, uh, right here, we're actually uh, you're finding specific components, and that that works all right with uh, shallow rendering because, um, like, yeah, it, it it's just kind of a shallow rendering thing. But I strongly suggest against doing this. Um, there's also resilience. Um, this uh, this blog post I recently wrote uh, called "Making Your UI Tests Resilient to Change" um, suggests that instead of doing the selectors. Uh, like you have here, which um, interesting that you have an ID component. That means that this component can only be used once on the page, which is fine if that's the case. But what's um, what's kind of confusing about uh, using a prop like ID is that there's no indication that the ID is used is used for testing. Uh, there's no semantic reason that the ID should be used for testing, and so I definitely recommend against using stuff like that for testing, and instead. I suggest using data test attributes to identify different parts in your uh, component. And so then um, you can create this little cell uh, function, which uh, will create a selector for that ID. And then you can do query selector um, and then sell email and password. And, and in our case, we can use wrapper.find and then sell you know whatever the data attribute, uh, data test attribute is. So I definitely recommend doing that. I don't recommend using components because um, what, what it really matters about this test uh, or, or about this component? Does it matter that it's rendering this loading component or does it matter that it's rendering something that says loading to the user? Um, it's, it's more, or, or in this case, that it's not showing that loading component. But in any case, the loading component, this loading component in particular, makes no difference. The user doesn't care that it's using this loading component. What matters is that a loading message is being shown. And so that's what your assertion should be. Um, so yeah, avoid using find and then the component uh, because that's testing implementation details. Um, okay, so yeah, pretty much lots of the same stuff there. I do um, actually kind of like this this pattern of having a function uh, that um, has like some default props. I totally do this all the time. Um, so yeah, kudos kudos to that. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure you don't need this default object even when you spread. Um, I'm not sure if that's spec, but I'm pretty sure that it is. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll just work even if you spread and it's undefined. Um, it won't work if you spread and it's null, but neither would this default anyway. So yeah, give that a try. You might not need that, which is kind of fun. Um, OK, so here you're calling uh, set state on the wrapper. That's a really uh, not a good idea. 
uh, the, again, the user of the component will never call set state on the instance of the component. That's just that's never going to happen. Uh, not even like the developer who's using your components uh, will ever do that. So they will be interacting with something else that will cause that state to to be set. So um, you click on a button, or you you maybe you have some sort of data subscription, like a Redux subscription or something that. Um, that uh, that you've got, and so you'll you'll simulate that kind of uh, you know state that gets updated somewhere else. Because when you just call set state, uh, you may be able to to set any kind of state that you want in here. But you could, in your collections view, you could create a situation where that state could never possibly ever be true. Um, so like it, where maybe your test can set this state, but your code uh, can't ever actually set that state that like the code path to set that state never enters or ever happens. And so this test in that scenario would be totally worthless. It would maybe it'd continue to pass, but you'd break the thing that sets the state in the first place and you wouldn't know that. So uh, yeah, it's much, it'll give you much more confidence that your application is working and that your component is working if um, you don't use set state or pretty much any instance methods um, at all. Yeah, because nobody's gonna use your component with, with the instance. Um, so yeah, even using the state to get the state, you don't wanna assert on the state. You want to assert on what is rendered. What is the user going to see because the state is this? Um, so yeah, don't. Um, I, I would highly recommend against doing uh, doing that stuff. Um, yeah, some more of that. Let's see. Yeah, uh, don't call instance methods. Uh, do things that will have will make those instance methods be called. So the show pop up, I'm sure, is um, do, do, do in here somewhere. Yeah, so this show pop up uh, method is going to be called yeah right here on click edit collection so because you're shallow rendering it's impossible for this to actually happen um, but if you if you mount this then the render item list will probably have some sort of button or something probably the edit collection button and you click on that and then you uh, you're successfully testing that the pop-up is shown now I should say that like this this is becoming um, like making all these changes turns this into an integration test, and yes, that's absolutely what we're doing. Um, the like the amount of, of unit testing going on here, um, while it's great, it's better than nothing. It's um, it's not giving you the confidence that you need. And I, I talk about um, this. Uh, There's a, a tweet from a man I respect highly. Uh, Guillermo Rausch, where he said, write test, not too many, mostly integration. This is a play on um, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Um, but uh, yeah, it's such a good tweet that I wrote a blog post to kind of dissect it a little bit. And uh, I, yeah, definitely recommend you give, give that a look if you haven't already. But the idea is here that uh, unit tests give you some confidence um, integration tests give you more, like a lot more confidence, and end-to-end -end tests give you like way more confidence. But um, there are trade-offs all the, all the way up and down uh, the confidence uh, spectrum. And integration tests are a great happy uh, medium place. So that's why I'm I'm suggesting get, getting rid of lots of this um, instant stuff because um, you you lose a lot of confidence when you do stuff like that. Um, do yeah also getting getting the props off of um, a dom element um, yeah you should be um, more concerned about what's ultimately being rendered not what the value of the props are so like maybe this select order by component whatever's being rendered at that point um, yeah sure it could have those props but what's it doing with those props and that's what what really matters and um, it could be argued that whatever that component is I'm gonna write tests for that component also separate totally unit tested and everything um, but um, and, and that that's great but you really don't know that things integrate together properly until you write an integration test um, and so yeah like may, maybe this thing is um, and and in fact, by um, testing like what is being rendered rather than what props are being passed, you make it so you don't actually need those uh, unit tests because they're being covered by your integration test here for the collections view. Um, okay, so let's see. I think that's pretty much it. 
Um, yeah, so don't call instance methods, don't get state, uh, pretty much don't do anything with the instance, don't use shallow rendering, um, use, use render or mount, um, and uh, use data test attributes. Um, I hope this is helpful to you. I, I think by doing all those things, then it'll be a lot more straightforward to know how you can um, cover some of these things and whether or not it's really valuable to cover some of these things. So uh, best of luck to you. And uh, I hope this was helpful. Bye.